Hello, we have a quick tune-up for you if you're getting ready for a water treatment operator exam. The most important regulation associated with water treatment is the surface water treatment rule and we feature it at most in course number WT, it's water treatment dash one, our very first water treatment uh, course. So let's take a look at some of the common uh, test questions that you might encounter on a certification exam. But first, let's put this in context. The pathogen is our number one objective in drinking water treatment. We need to eradicate this because of the uh, deaths that are uh, caused by pathogen ingestion, uh, about 4,000 deaths daily around the world. Unfortunately, our technology does not allow us to measure pathogens directly in the water, so we need indirect means of determining if our water is safe to drink or not. And these are embodied in two key regulations. In the first, we have an indicator organism, and that is coliform bacteria, and that has led to the total coliform rule. The other indirect means of assessing the safety of our water is the CT calculation that's come about from the surface water treatment rule. So the surface water treatment rule is intended to prevent uh, or protect our water supply from the pathogen. So let's keep that in mind as we look at these typical test questions. Are groundwater sources likely to have algae or pathogen related quality concerns? No, they're not. The risk from the pathogen is much more a surface water concern and that's why we have a surface water treatment rule to address this risk. What is the term for a disease causing microorganism? There are lots of different types of microorganisms. The ones that cause disease are referred to as pathogens. Name the three categories of pathogens. They are viruses, bacteria, and protozoa. Actually, these don't have to be necessarily pathogens. These could be the three categories of microorganisms generally, but certainly it applies to pathogenic microorganisms. Of these three categories, which are the most difficult to remove from the water? Well, the hardest ones to remove are the smallest ones, uh, and those are the viruses. The larger something uh, is, the easier it is to physically remove. And the protozoans are about a thousand times larger than the viruses. The bacteria approximately a hundred times larger. So they're easier to remove than the viruses. Not easy, but easier than the viruses. Now which particle size category includes all of these pathogens? It's the colloidal size range. So if you study surface water treatment, you realize that our objective is to take colloidal solids and convert them into suspended solids through the processes of conventional treatment. Uh, suspended solids are relatively easy to remove from the water, but the colloidal particles and the dissolved particles are incredibly difficult to remove. What are the two barriers to pathogens required by the surface water treatment rule? Well, the surface water treatment rule requires multiple barriers to the pathogen. Uh, those two barriers are, we have to take steps to remove the pathogens physically from the water, and then steps to inactivate or disinfect the pathogens that remain. What is the minimum level of removal and inactivation credit required for proper treatment of viruses? Well, we really don't have an MCL for viruses, but if we uh, had to uh, 
state one right now, it would be four logs of reduction uh, in the level of viruses entering our treatment facilities. Our treatment facilities should drop it by four logs or 99.99% uh, reduction. And that is the sum of our two barriers, removal and inactivation, has to come to at least this level of protection. Name the four treatment technologies approved by the surface water treatment rule. And these are removal technologies. So they are slow sand filtration, diatomaceous earth filtration, direct filtration, and conventional treatment. You can use other technologies conceivably, but you have to have special advanced approval to incorporate any of those. These are the uh, officially approved technologies by the surface water treatment rule. And again, the objective here is the first barrier of the surface water treatment rule, the physical removal of pathogens. Name the four treatment processes that combine to form this last approved treatment methodology that we call conventional treatment. Well, you should know this. The four processes are coagulation, flocculation, sedimentation, and filtration. And as you prepare for the certification exam, you should definitely know a lot about each of these key processes. What is the automatic Giardia removal credit awarded for a properly operated conventional treatment plant? Well, we have we will receive two and a half logs of removal credit if we have a conventional treatment plant that is regarded by the regulatory agency as being properly operated. Two and a half logs are total requirement for Giardia is three logs, so we're almost all of the way there uh, with respect to Giardia. Name the four chemical disinfectants that are approved by the surface water treatment rule. So to accomplish our second barrier, we can use any one or any combination of these four chemicals, chlorine, chloramines, chlorine dioxide, and ozone. What is the means of gauging disinfection effectiveness under the surface water treatment rule? Well, we saw this right up front. The surface water treatment rule has given us a second means of determining if our water is safe to drink from a pathogen standpoint, and that means is the CT calculation. What is the minimum virus credit required from, a, from the disinfection step at a properly operated direct filtration plant? Well, this is kind of a tough one. You have to know uh, a few basic things here. First, you have to know that the total virus removal that we need to achieve is the four logs that we looked at a little while earlier. And at a properly operated direct filtration plant, we get two logs of, oh, I'm sorry, we get one log of virus removal credit. That's in the first barrier. So in the second barrier, we have to get the remaining three logs uh, in order to be in compliance. Now we can certainly get more than three logs, that's our minimum, but that gets us into compliance. So if you've had difficulty with some or all of these review questions, uh, may we recommend that you spend an hour of your time to take most course WT-1 that covers the surface water treatment rule and all of these topics and more. So just join us at www.mostwatertraining.com. Thank you.